I observed in the culture an island of cells that looked different from the, uh, from the, the normal cell population. And because of my experience with cells by that time, I knew that this was what we then called a spontaneous transformation. That is, the spontaneous acquisition of cancer cell properties by a normal cell in culture. There was now a growing belief that inside malignant cell lines like Henrietta Lacks's was a cancer virus. If it could be found and isolated, cancer would be conquered. But it was going to take a great deal of money. Help came from a woman called Mary Lasker. She was a millionaire society hostess in New York. I think this is one of the most exciting still lifes that Matisse ever did. It's full of color and warmth. I have some pictures here by Cezanne and Manet and Renoir. Lasker's husband had died of cancer. Since then, she had devoted herself to a crusade. She wanted the government to fund a vast project, like the space program, to cure cancer. Believe it or not, uh, the amount of money uh, that's being spent for medical research is, well, it's just piddling. And you won't believe this, less is spent on, on cancer research than we spend on chewing gum. But cancer was low on the political agenda. To persuade the politicians, Mary Lasker needed to find the promise of a simple cure. Then one of her scientist friends, Matilda Krim, told her about the virus cancer theory. To Mary Lasker, the virus theory of cancer was very exciting when she heard of it. It seemed to offer a point of attack to the cancer problem, you know. Uh, knowing the enemy is always useful. She called me one day. And she says, Matilda, we have to push this uh, campaign for cancer research because this is something the public will be in favor of. Everybody is afraid of cancer. We together started this campaign for cancer research. I'm Bing Crosby, and I am on stage. And that means the show's begun. Lasker and Krim turned to Hollywood. They persuaded the stars to appear in network television shows. Their job was to speak publicly about the thing of which everyone was terrified. Today I'm 53 years old. I have a family consisting of six kids and a wife whom I adore. And I also have lung cancer. You are no till somebody loves you You're Their other task was to broadcast the confident promises of the scientists. Cares. It is my belief that we are now witnessing the beginning of a great explosion of knowledge about this disease, which will culminate in its complete control. Even if I'm gone when you see me speak these words to you, let me join you in this crusade. And let's make this world a world that's cancer-free. But at the very moment when the stars were promising the end of cancer, the cell biologists realized there was something seriously wrong with their science. And the reason was Henrietta Lacks and her cells. It began when a scientist called Stanley Gartler examined many of the major cell lines. He discovered that all of them secreted the same form of enzyme. It was a type found only in black people. The problem was that all the cell lines he looked at came from whites. The only black cell line was Henrietta Lacks. At a packed meeting of cell biologists, Gartler announced the inescapable conclusion. He told them, folks, uh, cell lines that are presumably derived from other tissues in different individuals are not such. These are cells from Henrietta Lacks. If you think you have been working with breast cells, you're wrong. If you think you've been working with lung cells, you're wrong. And kidney cells, you're wrong. You're working with cells derived from a human female uterus. And that's that. And it was very embarrassing and it was very shocking to many people. And there was, there was a great alarm. I couldn't believe it. He was saying that this enzyme is present only among blacks. So, Ergo, 
this tissue did not come from you, you're white, it must have come from black. If it came from black, it probably came from Hela. So you mixed your cells with Hela. Whether he's, I say he's wrong, I, I say he's wrong. Many of the cell biologists refuse to believe Gartler. But for those who had developed cell lines from their own flesh and blood, the only other explanation was even worse. What Gartler was uh, saying about my daughter's cells was that they were, had uh, enzyme characteristics of a black parent, which is the reason I ran to the telephone to speak with my wife. And she assured me that I had nothing to worry about. I'm not black and neither is my wife. Leonard Hayflick never, he never believed what he was hearing. In his particular case, because it involved his own blood, his own cells. It involved, really, to get down to a cellular level, it involved his own sperm and that of the egg of his wife. To me, it had absolutely no importance whatsoever, other than my uh, intellectual curiosity. Bogus. It was, um, it was uh, a scandal. It was, uh, to put it mildly, something terribly, terribly wrong. The problem was that no one fully understood how Henrietta Lacks's cells had contaminated the other cell lines. There was something wrong in cell biology, but no one knew how big or quite what the problem was. Meanwhile, Mary Lasker had succeeded with her campaign. She had got to the president. Mary Lasker made of cancer a subject to which politicians had to pay attention. President is here, ladies and gentlemen. And she would go to, to the White House, either alone or as a guest at a big dinner. And so she pulled out her little notebook and she read the numbers to the president. How many dead? How many sick? how much it costs. And she would say to Johnson, in no time we're going to discover tumor-inducing viruses in humans, and we should have a vaccine against these viruses. You know, that's power. And he performed perfectly. Someday I hope, I'm going to pray for, that we will uh, find a cure for cancer. And uh, I, I want it done in my time. I want to play my part in it. I want to do something about it. The loneliest moment I ever had in my life was when I learned that my mother was gone from me uh, because of this uh, terrible uh, disease. Politicians now vied with each other to find a relative who had died of cancer. My favorite aunt, my aunt Elizabeth, died with cancer. She was. Was 32 years of age. And she was a wonderful person for withering away with cancer. In 1971, Mary Lasker triumphed. She persuaded President Nixon to announce a national war on cancer. I will also ask for an appropriation of an extra $100 million to launch an intensive campaign to find a cure for cancer. And I will ask later for whatever additional funds can effectively be used. The time has come in America when the same kind of concentrated effort that split the atom and took man to the moon should be turned toward conquering this dread disease. The promise Nixon held out to the American people was an end to cancer. Millions of dollars were to be given to the scientists who promised they could find the cancer virus. It was the biggest medical research program ever organized. And at its heart were the cell lines. But those in charge of the cell lines knew there was a problem with contamination. They appointed a scientist, Walter Nelson Rees, to investigate just how bad the problem was. We began to probe and to investigate, um, purposely looking not necessarily purposely looking for a mistake, but wanting to know the details of individual cells. And what did you begin to find? And what we began to find that was that many, many, many of these cell lines, I mean, eventually over 100 cell lines were alike. And were alike to Gila. 
Nelson Rees discovered that HeLa had a power unlike any other cell line. If just one HeLa cell was dropped by mistake into another culture, or blown across the laboratory by a current of air, this cell would begin to grow and multiply faster than its host. It represented what cancer was dreaded for. A single cell has gone awry. It grows uncontrolled. And the problem was to become much worse. Nelson Rees discovered HeLa cells in places where it didn't seem possible. Building 41 was the most secure laboratory in the world. It had airlocks and a special ventilation system. It had been built to contain the deadly cancer virus when it was found. Nelson Rees examined a breast cell line being used inside the building. He was convinced it had been contaminated by HeLa, but this was impossible. HeLa cells had never been allowed inside Building 41. Walter Nelson Rees contacted me one day and said he had gotten his line from somebody who got it from me, and uh, he said uh, basically that they're HeLa cells, they're not breast cells at all. The reason I was so suspicious of its being HeLa cells is we didn't have HeLa cells in our lab, and I really couldn't see how it was possible. But HeLa had got into Building 41 in disguise. Other cell lines already contaminated had been brought in from outside. No one knew that these were infected by HeLa. But then Nelson Rees discovered something even more alarming. He examined what was believed to be the original stock of the breast cell line, HBT3. He found that even these were all HeLa. There had never been any breast cells at all. We had several freezes of HBT3 and we tested every one of them and they were all HeLa cells. Uh, the inescapable conclusion is that the first cell that landed in that petri dish to grow was a HeLa cell. So had you ever managed to grow a breast cell? No sir, never did. Um, kind of got out of the business very quickly after this happened. Why is she so powerful? That I can't answer. One just simply does not know what the constitution is of HeLa cells. One does not know what the constitution is why it is that in spite of, 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 um, of insults, human insults, uh, insults in culture, temperature changes, letting them lie overnight on the counter without being intubated, there'll always be a HeLa cell growing. What Nelson Rees had discovered began to undermine the war on cancer. At its headquarters in the suburbs north of Washington, urgent meetings were held. If Nelson Rees was right, Hundreds of the cell lines on which the whole program depended were contaminated. It meant that all the research done using these lines was suspect. Was he right? Of course he was right. And it, it turned out later, you know, when we took all the, all the cooperating laboratories and went back and looked at everything, uh, we found out it was right. How serious is that? Well, I would say that virtually all of the, the scientific conclusions that I have reached are worthless. It is devastating, ultimately, to have done, to have wasted three years, four years, on the wrong cells. If your entire program was built upon the study of specifically what's going on in your cell system, you're working with the wrong cell line, it's, it's, it's comparable to thinking you're living in a palace and actually you're living in a cabin in a log cabin somewhere. It's not just that this culture was contaminated with HeLa, it's that the entire scientific community in one way or another is contaminated with the wrong information, with the wrong results, and with no advance. It was becoming clear that the scientists had completely misunderstood the evidence in front of their eyes. Some now began to question the original theory of spontaneous transformation. It said that cells spontaneously turned into cancer in the laboratory because of a virus. But maybe the cancer had not been caused by a virus. Maybe it had simply been a contamination by HeLa. Could this mean there was no such thing as the cancer virus? But then, the Russians found the cancer virus. 